everyone welcome to cafe I. in the previous video i talked about how to build this which is getting started with lang flow and building a very very simple agent just introducing lang flow and the idea of building an agent and then i concluded by saying i'm going to move forward to a little more complex scenarios so here we go this video is going to do more deeper dive into lang flow and talk about different components services and uh, you know elements they essentially call it components that you have within langflow like give a quick overview about it and then also show a bit of more complex agent which is like a sequential task agent how do you get this you can just go to new and you can probably select something like a sequential task agent it should be right here yeah and then this tool has built in a lot of sample templates like you have seo keyword generator there's a research agent which generates focused plan conducts web searches and synthesizes finding into comprehensive scenarios and i'm going to talk about more of this in upcoming videos but right now i'm going to just double click and move from foundational to a little more beginner level and then we'll go to intermediate and advanced use cases so i've already pre-built it just to save time and this workflow has a bunch of nodes it talks about what a sequential agent really simply means as the word sequential says you have an agent one two three and an output so each agent receives an input from the previous agent so this is kind of a chaining scenario happening it's not you know coordinator or a planner agent and worker agent it's more of a sequential flow and this is a great starting point for multi-agent scenarios because you are you can actually make sure that you validate each output towards the end it has a lot of benefits like you know you can have specialization for instance each agent focuses on a single task or a specific task could be single could be multiple but this has to be some sort of specificity you can move or think about information flow as well like information is enhanced at each step you can obviously do a multi-paradigm, multi-agent, like uh, non-sequential flows. But again, this is uh, a sequential flow. You can combine data and see data in a structured output and you can do quality control, etc. And obviously build your own sequence. This uses OpenAI API key and it uses, I believe, another tool called Tavily AI Search, which I also talked about in the previous video. Before I go in the sequence, I'm going to make more details here and I will talk about certain specific uh, sections like the components that it has. You can go show legacy, do beta, all of that. So I'll just keep the focus on core and beta, ignore legacy, obviously auto hide and all of that is here. So the first is input, output very standard, prompts very standard. Now data is where it starts to get interesting. Within data, you have options to add an API request. So if I go and just add a component called API request, what will happen is I have options to communicate with different APIs and imagine the kind of connectivity you can bring by incorporating some scenarios. So you have options to specify the URL, you have the options to specify call command, you can specify the method which is get, post, patch, put, all of that is supported. You can, uh, you know, establish headers, query parameters, timeout, all of that you can control. All right. Uh, I'm going to delete it from this flow. Then you have directory. I'm, I'm actually going to add all of them just to showcase each of them. A webhook is very straightforward. You have a payload. You describe the webhook con component here. You can get some more parameters within webhook. If you have some custom configurations to make, you can do that. A URL is basically just an endpoint which you hit, uh, could be an open internet URL or something like that. It can also be that your plan is generating multiple URLs and you need them to kind of pull information from there. You can format a little bit of output like, you know, let's say you have a web scraper and you want to do this. This is a great starting point to do that. SQL query and file and directory. Directory is very straightforward, like, you know, path to something you will probably need some sort of a communication or a variable to already do that and custom variables can be created. Like when you create a variable, it will ask for a variable name, it will ask for a type. For instance, if you make it a credential, then it will apply to it various sort of fields and it can have a value. If you keep it generic, then, uh, you know, it's basically just a 
standard set of uh, values that you can do it it completely depends on what the variable is a variable is a variable uh, you can have certain types specified to the variable and you can probably you know do a little bit of nesting like depth of the variable all right file is very very straightforward file sql query you can literally hit against databases and make these calls so that your agent if required can communicate execute sql get the data and do all of that why am i explaining this because this is me thinking the previous video was uh, more foundational where you got introduced to the idea and again before that i've done a lot of videos this year i'm trying to build more stuff with that a shameless plug if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button like this if you dislike comment me bata do yaar kya nahi pasand aaya if you need more content like this uh, if you want to reach out i'm very soon starting a community please uh, you know just keep watching the either the member space by supporting my work or even in general i make public announcements back to the content so sql query sql query you can specify database url specify uh, columns errors uh, you can specify the complete query you can make it like do a pass through which i have honestly not tried i'm going to try it out in the future and show so data is very very important one of the most important components and the rest are very standard like you know processing would be you combine data you filter values <clears throat> you merge data you parse some data tons of different operations then models are pretty much models wherever you get it these are essentially large language models you can try and hack this to even give you traditional deep learning model like for instance you use hugging face and uh, you can use some sort of a model from hugging face which is which has a custom inference endpoint and all that so you can technically use any model but by far and large this is aligned and more tuned to generative ai models obviously you can go more beyond that it then supports vector stores a bunch of them astra db of course because it's the product from astra db cassandra clickhouse chrome elastic fast you name it they have it they have literally every qdrent ready superbase substars evvet every uh, vector data with databases available you can configure them if need be again the point of explaining all of this is the breadth of it because so that you understand that all of these components are required in building agents and agents essentially are systems which are you know semi or fully autonomous automated learning system non deterministic systems flows workflows so all of this can help there agent is an agent yeah i missed embedding embeddings again you uh, supports multitude of embeddings memories there's a lot of good uh, memory implementations that they have put zip chat is great you can use redis chat you know all of that is super nice tools mostly you have search tools because there's different sort of search providers and then you have data like wikipedia yahoo finance youtube transcript these are some generic tools logic uh, you have a component called flow as a tool which is kind of an advanced so probably fourth class and then just nested branching there are some helper functions which can help you generate ids messages uh, etc etc date etc all right so uh, with that outline let me go back what this agent does is it gives me kind of a evaluation of should i invest in a stock or not so i'll ask it a question like should i invest in hdfc bank give me a detailed analysis okay i just i don't know if it will automatically find the symbol or not but i have tried this running this in the past and as you can see above there's a lot of banking research and structuring of outputs that it has been able to do there has been instances where it uh, throws an error like i think the the go search was giving an error i think it might still give an error because it shouldn't be there uh, i already have okay now i have tavelli search so this should be fine if the flow is running so what what's happening in the background is it's trying to start obviously from the input uh, from the chat input and move its way forward and uh, you know kind of go through each step and see what's happening so right now it's executing tavelli search and it's kind of asking a question that should i invest in icici bank i don't know why it took icici it's just previous search history i guess it looks like that my yeah so okay yeah my it it gave hdfc i think it was just previous search history so now it has given me a detailed analysis it has finished it i don't know this is probably previous history but it went through and looked through uh, some hdfc you know nsc hdfc bank information 
I don't know, tool is hanging out during your demo a little bit. But yeah, let me just go towards the end. So what it has done is, it has processed HDFC Bank stock analysis, news, financial health, a lot of different dimensions around matrices, market cap, stock performance, blah, blah, blah. It's like a advisory agent. It's kind of doing that. And then uh, provided finally conclusion that HDFC Bank is a strong candidate for investment, particularly for long term, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, the point is that you started with a question and it gave you a definitive answer and let's see how and what happened during all of this. So you obviously started here with the chat input. The research agent as I've described in the previous you know session you can externalize a prompt. Here is a research agent protocol. So all of this is you know image collection, categories, presentation, evaluation all of that is here. This is a research agent. This is a Tavli AI where it connects and pulls back the information. It's also connected to Yahoo Finance for pulling in the news, which is what it did. So once all the news is done, right, every information is connected, message is passed and information is flowing through. So there's a now a next agent, which is a finance agent. And what is it doing? It's doing a financial analysis. It's looking at the stock prices, understanding symbols, understanding company, market intelligence, historical patterns and there's a very good analysis framework prompt which I have given again the intent is not to go in the specifics of the prompt and finally there's an analysis and editor which is uh, kind of just providing your editorial summary so if you remember this is a sequential flow a b c is how I'm moving forward and finally towards the end you get a chat output which is you know uh, what you get at the end of the, uh, the flow so all in all, in totality, you start with a question and all of these agents have, you know, finished a bunch of actions, tasks for you and given you a good, you know, response around it. So this is a sequential agent. In the next video, I'm going to try to go more detailed, more exhaustive. Uh, if you are interested in content like this, please hit the subscribe and drop a comment. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening.